This segment is a continuation of the full mouth periodontal debridement and um, in review of basically I start out on the upper and now we're on to the lower. Um, I left off with the periodontal um, endoscope on the left left explorer so I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I start out by uh, and I have the straight instrument on so I can leave that there. If I had to use the curved, I would have to switch that. Um, I'll have to rebend the saliva ejector a little bit. This was on the upper right, and so I'm going to have to bend this almost, well, pretty much to a right angle. And it makes an L shape, so that's why I, the way I remember it is L for lower. Um, it bends around the mouth and fits going up on the distal here. Um, then this is just how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. You know, some people put the saliva ejector over here. I like to do it this way because if I can, if the patient starts swallowing a lot, then um, I know that they're about ready to cough. So I can move them over this way more, and that's that's generally what I'll do. Um, sometimes I lay them up a little bit more, um, although a lot of times they've already tolerated being back further. So it's just mostly for my vision. But I definitely want to have the saliva ejector in a position that's going to effectively evacuate all the water that's going on because there is water from two sources. So I start out by doing my tactile debridement first, you know, going around, getting everything as um, clean, super gingivally as I can, so I'm finished there. Um, with subgingivally, you know, it's mostly just deplacking, large calculus, and pocket dilation, and kind of finding out where you need to be going with the camera. You get, you know, feel your way around, get an idea of what the landscape is like. Um, you know, a lot of times here I'll have to tilt the patient over more to do my tactile debridement. So I have the patient um, pretty much straight up and down, maybe a little bit toward the left. And I have, um, I'm sitting at about, uh, I would say maybe 11 o'clock, maybe even 12 o'clock. Um, I put the endoscope in and I start instrumenting, cross-instrumenting from the distal buckle all the way into the distal. And sometimes these pockets are quite deep, you know, so you're doing a lot of this kind of a smooshing, rotating movement while you're wat watching what you're doing on the screen. And a lot of times you can look all the way into the distal lingual line angle. And then over here, sometimes, sometimes I have to come from the same side. A lot of times, you know, I can I can angle this back enough to where I can get that. Now, a lot of if it, at at the CEJ area, if you can't angle back enough, and that's not that uncommon, you have to switch um, instruments. But you're not going to do that until you're done doing all of the distals here. Distals here, you know. Um, if you know, and, and some of these areas don't have pocketing, I don't really scope them. You know, sometimes you can get fairly far into there, you know, but you really have to kind of angle it back in to get in there. But you know, you try to get a lot of use out of wherever you can get with this before you change it. Then um, I'll move my position to the side of the patient and I can I kind of have to hold this a little bit angling backwards if you can see that that's okay because you're going back into the mouth from the side but then I use this
Sorry, I'm positioning the microscope here. I use this to go to the lingual surfaces. And, you know, a lot of times here you, you don't see much of the root, but you can see the line angle, and that's important for me to see the line angle. Okay, so you're going from the distal lingual line angle to the mesial lingual line angle around in here, back in here. Okay. Okay, so I've switched um, to the left explorer, and again, you know, I'm having to kind of hold it to where it's turned back into my hand. Okay, holding it like this. And I go into this corner, clean the furcation, come around into the mesial. And um, a lot of times I'll cross instrument there. And once you get to the premolars, there's not a lot of facial area. Like, you know, getting into the vacation here, you'd have to do that in the first molar sometimes. And then cross instrument. Up in the anterior segment, you can use this, the left viewer in a bunch of different ways. Just depends on, you know, how comfortable you are in being able to put it in there. Sometimes, you know, you, you, know, you, can't, you can't twist it too much, so then you have to go with a different angle. Every once in a while, uh, from the front, from, from the anterior, you know, you can just, I just turn this around basically. Fortunately, there's not a lot of, a lot of pullback on, from this fiber. You know, sometimes, you know, wherever it fits, and so, you know, if you can get it in this way, that, that's not easy. Sometimes you can get it in this way and see all the way across by same side or cross instrumenting.